Welcome to the second weekend in Lent. Wherever you are joining us from, you are very welcome. Whether you are joining us online or you come to worship in our church buildings and just reflect and catch up and listen again online, wherever you are, you are welcome. As we join in worship, in prayer and praise and thanksgiving from our comfortable homes, often offering prayers and intercessions and hope and uh, laying before God our anxious fears for our world and for God's children around it in places which are much less comfortable than ours. We also at the moment are holding in prayer those who are receiving updates to their uh, gas and electricity pricing and are anxious about the future. It is a time where we see new life and the, the beginning glimpses of spring and yet at the same time it seems that not all is good in the world. So whether you are thankful or fearful you are welcome to bring those thanks and fears, those hopes and anxieties in faith and in trust before our God who hears and listens and offers answers to our prayers and our anxieties, not always in the way that we would like, but he is always there, always present and always open to hearing them. As we come to worship this second week of Lent, we are moving through the season and we still reflect and hope that we can be refreshed and deepened in our own discipleship as well as in our service to the world and God's people. Over this last week, we have uh, many of us donated towards the Ukrainian, um, the disaster unfolding for the Ukrainian people. And uh, we have got a very heartfelt thanks that we must share from the Polish centre in Newcastle who came over in a van to collect everything that was left um, at the vicarage for the Ukrainian relief uh, the, uh, all through this last week. And the last couple of bags that after that van had gone have gone to Freisenberg's in town, um, whose menu is rather amazing. And perhaps if you are not normally takeout people, especially not in Lent, that doesn't mean to say that you can't make a mental note to go and support them as Ukrainian owners. A huge thank you from the Polish Centre and from the Ukrainian uh, community and citizens in the northeast as we gather as many things as we can. There are also um, opportunities to give donations of money to uh, two or three different um, organisations or different collections for that and we will circulate those extra links. The diocese has uh, circulated another couple of links over this last few days so if you would like to donate money and to know it's going very specifically to uh, organisations on the ground, then I can give you links uh, to be able to do that. It seems still a horrific situation and as we pray for the Ukraine, we pray too for those people who are managing the influx of refugees again on Europe's borders and who are often not the richest of communities in the first place and yet their opening of their hearts is incredibly um, biblical as they welcome in those who have fled with almost nothing. And so our prayers are not just with those who flee and those who remain to fight, but for those who welcome them in on uh, uh, Europe's borders, offering uh, a hope and a home and food and shelter. We pray too for those Russians who are on the other side and perhaps are not supporting their country's invasion of Ukraine and must be wondering exactly what the future is for them too. All in a disastrous situation are in our prayers and of course we remember that the Ukraine is just there and is the most immediate uh, to mind and in place and yet it just echoes so many other places where people have to flee and where violence is widespread, where food and power and water and shelter are in brief and um, short supply and so our prayers turn again to the Middle East and to the Yemen and to places like that. Wherever you are watching sadly from you are joining with us in those prayers and we hope that all of those people know that they are lifted up in hope 
by people who feel there is nothing more they can do but pray and yet that is one of the most powerful things we have in our disposal. So please uh, we welcome you to join with us this week in community and in our uh, events this week then we are looking forward to celebrating a number of birthdays at Friends Together on Wednesday Wednesday afternoon from 1.30 in St Mark and St Cuthbert's Church all are welcome for tea and coffee and cake and sandwiches and uh, birthday cake this week Wednesday afternoon next Saturday is the first of our quizzes there are still tickets available so if you would like to join uh, Andy's latest quiz it's at St Mark and St Cuthbert's Church Hall this month and next month will be St Peter's so Saturday March the 19th at 7 p.m if you would like a ticket then uh, please let me or Liza or anybody at church uh, who will wave the reminder around know and the tickets are five pounds which includes pie and peas you can bring whatever you'd like to drink yourself but the pie and peas are included and that will be a fun evening the money that we had uh, wanted to raise we had wanted to allocate to our brownies and rainbows and uh, they may well still be grateful for that but our brownies and rainbows made a, a big donation they learnt some ukrainian last week and made a donation of some of their toys with labels saying you're in our thoughts and prayers to children fleeing the ukraine so it may well be that they will choose to pass some of that profit on to uh, rather than keep it for the fundraising of their own groups maybe to pass on to children in the ukraine you are very welcome to join us whether you come to church or not in our community uh, event at so at the church hall saturday the 19th that's next saturday 7 p.m for a quiz complete with the infamous now play-doh round uh, where you have to make things for your team to recognize if you have a team come as a team if you are just on your own you can join a team on a table as you arrive this Monday, so tomorrow as you're watching this, is the second of our Lent prayer groups. 24 people last Monday, fabulous response to uh, the request to come and create some space to sit and think and discuss and pray and then close, well open and close uh, in prayer, closing with Compline. So this Monday you are welcome whether you came or not last week, you can still come again this week, the weeks stand alone. And this week it is at St Peter's in the green room, starting at 7, 7 till 8, using the bottom door on the ramp, the accessible ramp entrance. 7 o'clock, Monday evening, this week at St Peter's. You are very welcome to join us then too. Please, as you go through your week, stay safe, stay blessed and enjoy the week. For the moment though, enjoy worship. Take care. Good evening. And welcome to this, our Lenten service from St Mark's and St Cuthbert's Creedon Park and St Peter's Harton. Wherever you are listening from, you are most welcome. And we hope you will take part and share in our worship as we offer our praise and thanksgiving to God our Father and his most gracious Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling.
the Lord, our Redeemer, be with you and also with you. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Let us hear our Lord's blessings on those who follow him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from earth of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking firepot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying to your descendants, I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. Your word is a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path. Out of the depths I have called to you, Lord. Let your ears be open to hear my voice. My hope is in God's word. If you recorded all our sins, 
who could come before you? My hope is in God's word. There is forgiveness with you. Therefore, you shall be feared. My hope is in God's word. My soul is longing for the Lord, more than those who watch for daybreak. My hope is in God's word. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. My hope is in God's word. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. My hope is in God's word. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you, even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Your word is a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path. My redeemer
praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often have I desired to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. How does your heart feel today? What emotions and feelings are within you? I'm sure none of us have been unaffected by the news reports concerning the Ukraine, the choices being made by Putin, the response of so many wishing to help and support those in need. How do you feel as you watch all of this unfold? Tears may have flowed from your eyes this week, your heart sore seeing images of a bombed hospital. Anger may have welled up within you as politicians make slow decisions, as Putin continues to spin his lies and deceit, as more people suffer each day. Despair or a sense of fear may have come to you. What will happen next? Where will this go? Or you may be numb, overwhelmed by too many images, too much to process, uncertain and lost. With all of this in our hearts and in our minds, we encounter in our Gospel a Jesus who perhaps offers to us a way of being with the current situation. For we meet Jesus, the greatest of our prophets, the one through whom God's justice and truth is heard loudly and powerfully as he speaks out against deceptive rulers and laments from a heart that is sore and broken. As Jesus continues his journey to Jerusalem, the journey we make with him during the weeks of Lent, a group of Pharisees seek him out. Jesus is alone. There are no disciples here with him. In the Gospel of Luke, more so than any of the other Gospels, Jesus often takes time to be alone with God, time to pray, to speak and to listen. It reminds us that we need to do the same, to take time each day to be with God in prayer. The Pharisees who come to warn Jesus of Herod's intention to kill him come not to save Jesus, but to manipulate him. The Pharisees are no friend of this Messiah, who has been healing many and proclaiming the kingdom. Like many prophets before him, Jesus knows what is going on here. He knows the willful, deceitful and sinful ways of politicians and rulers. Go and tell that fox for me, says Jesus. Go and tell that cunning and destructive Herod all that I have been doing and all that will happen. For Jesus speaks here of his coming passion, of a time when from the cross itself he will utter, it is finished. Jesus is all too aware of how the world works. 
He knows the enemies of the cross and he resists their lies and illusions. As Jesus looks towards his passion and gazes over Jerusalem, his very heart breaks. Tears may well have fallen as he laments over the city, over those who have fallen for the lies and are enslaved to sin and evil, those who have killed the prophets and will kill him. This tradition of lamenting is an important part of our biblical tradition, found especially within the Psalms. People cry out to God in prayer from hearts sore and troubled, shouting out for God to save those in need, for evil and wickedness to be overcome and brought down, for hopeless situations to change for the better. In our terribly polite British society and church, this is a tradition that we can struggle with. Yet here we find Jesus lamenting deeply. Such lamentation is healthy, expressing our emotions without self-censorship or fear, engaging directly with God in prayer as we shout, scream, cry or sit empty of words. Those who lament turn to God. There is an implicit belief that God is present and listening. It prevents us from becoming lost in despair and being trapped in our own egos. Such cries give voice to what is hoped for. It makes concrete the kingdom of God, a place where war is no more, peace and justice will reign. By demanding this kingdom, by crying out for it, the deep desire within us to work with God in bringing it to fruition is felt. Those who lament refuse to accept the status quo and they face the horrors of our world. Lament creates space for hope as we acknowledge the pain and suffering we see and encounter. Lament prevents us from ignoring the need of our brothers and sisters. Lament stops us from falling into apathy and resting in our comfort. It can connect us as a community. Lament is holy and we are called to follow this Jesus who speaks truth to power and laments from a broken heart. In our New Testament lesson from Philippians, Paul writes to a community he loves deeply, one he very likely founded, and invites them to imitate him as he imitates Jesus. Earlier in this letter, Paul has written, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Through our baptism, we are united to Jesus in his death and resurrection, that essential movement from death to life, from despair to hope, from fear to love. But this movement requires us to first face the fear, the despair, the evil and sin that seeks to bring about death, just as Christ first faced Satan in the wilderness. It requires us to know our deep need of God, our dependence upon the Lord, for us to listen to that disturbing voice of the Holy Spirit that seeks to lead us into all truth. This is the very essence of the Lenten pilgrimage, turning from sin in order to be faithful to Christ. For us, like Samuel, to say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. For us, like Mary, to say yes to the Lord, even if we are afraid. For us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow our Saviour. I have no easy answers to make you feel good or feel better. I join you in feeling powerless afraid 
angry and just overwhelmed. But I invite you to join me in returning to the Lord, in being faithful to Christ by praying, by lamenting, by asking difficult questions to smooth politicians and raising your voice on behalf of the exile and the stranger. What is God asking of you today, this week, in and through this season of Lent? Do not harden your hearts, but let the Spirit in to transform you and change you evermore into the likeness of Jesus Christ. As St. Teresa of Calcutta said, stay where you are. Stay where you are and find your own Calcutta. Find the sick, the suffering, the lonely, right there where you are, in your own homes, your own families, workplaces and communities. Reach out to welcome. Reach out and speak up on their behalf. Reach out and hold them in love and prayer. Let the mind of Christ Jesus be in you, for you are the very hands and feet of Christ in this world. We are the body of Christ together. Ask God what it is that he requires of you and be bold, be brave. Let the Spirit guide you and lead you so that all God's children dare to seek, to dream God's reign anew. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. For this, the second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's suffering and by following in his way, come to share in his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Father. For the mission of the Church, that in faithful witness it may preach the Gospel to the ends of the earth, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy hear us. For peace in the world, and especially at this time, the Ukraine. That a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. Let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy hear us. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick and all who suffer. For refugees, prisoners and all in danger. That they may be relieved and protected. Let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy hear us. For those whom we have injured or offended. Let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. In communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. Lord of the Church, you hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. 
Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. God of compassion, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have reconciled your people to yourself. As we follow his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Master